Hello. Hi. Good afternoon. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be part of this incredible symposium and be able to share with you a little bit about this project that I started just three years ago. Uh, the, the project is called uh, Expediciones Botanicas in Spanish, that is um, Botanical Expeditions. The goal of the project is try to connect people with um, natural, conservation, natural conservation in Baja California. So, no, I think it's not working. Not working. Okay, now it's working, thank you. Um, so, 8% of the California floristic province is actually the northwest part of the Baja California state in Mexico. So, in this orange area, right here, right here, you are able to find around 1,686 native species of plants, and 447 of them are endemic to this orange uh, part. The whole uh, California floristic province is considered a biodiversity hotspot due to the high diversity of um, plants and animals that live here, and also the high number of endemisms, and how threatened um, the biodiversity and also the habitats are in here due to the activities of the, the humans and change of land use. So, okay, yes. So the project is based in this area, in the southeast part of Tijuana. It's, and in red, I marked the, all the trails that um, we use to botanize. And I want to, to just uh, take a look to this uh, image uh, from the satellite from this year. You are able to see that almost Tecate is connected with Tijuana, um, right here, by concrete, and also Rosarito to Tijuana. And this is how the cities now look like in the Northwest state. And that's why I consider the place that I do the hikings the last refuge to all the wildlife and all the plants. Because, I mean, it's the only part that we still have in like this kind of uh, chaparral and scrub, uh, yeah, coastal scrub. So if you remember this image and just go back in time for 30 years and go to the next slide. Yes. Okay, this is how the Northwest used to look like. As you can see, the cities were not connected with concrete, and the way that we are development is develop all these cities is not sustainable at all. Um, so now we don't have this kind of natural habitat, and if we take a close, closer look to some emblematic hills, uh, such as Cerro Colorado that is in the middle of Tijuana, you're able to see that just 30 years ago, it was connected with other uh, natural areas as uh, Cerro San Isidro. And now Cerro uh, Colorado is surrounded by houses and industries and shops and concrete. So this, even that this Cerro is um, a conservation area of Tijuana. The way that we are developing is not sustainable. And it's not the only exam example. If you go to Ensenada or even to Rosarito or Tecate or San Quintin, the way that we are developing cities around uh, all the state is similar. So you're able to see this other place, Canyon de Doña Petra. In just 20 years, we changed all the canyon and we built a lot of houses around. And this is how it looks like not right now. Uh, this is the reality I see like every day uh, in, the, I'm at, uh, in the satellite images is a reality that you're able to see. But uh, I am also an, an environmental consultant, and since 2018, I have a Ecotono Consultoria Ambiental in Tijuana, where I give advice to, uh, I mean, to industries, to people that want to change the, the lands to develop um, big um, houses and stuff. So I give them advice, advice to try to make these kind of projects more sustainable, but at the end, the conclusion is the same. The actual development trend to the, of the Northwest in Baja California is not sustainable. So when I started this project about Expediciones Botanicas, um, the goal was to try to conserve biodiversity in all the state, but more urgent near the cities. So with all this development scenario, uh, I say, okay, there's something I, I, I must be able to do. So that's why I start uh, doing these Expediciones Botanicas. So, Expediciones Botanicas, um, we go for a hike, maybe four or five 
uh, miles. And I talk, I talk about non-native plants, about invasive plants, and of course, a lot about native plants. Uh, I show them like cool stuff about them, and I talk about pollinators, the uses, the actual threats, and we have fun. The idea is that pe the people have like good memories on the chaparral on the, or the coastal scrub with friends and family, and somehow they start like being like connected with these areas that they are able to identify uh, plants and somehow they start love, loving these places because we need allies. I need allies, um, more people interested in trying to conserve the Baja California uh, biodiversity. So in order to be able to start like doing the expeditiones botanicas, first I had to take uh, first aid courses in remote areas. It was a, a whole process. It's not like for one day to another and a lot of different kind of trainings. And I do also took more botany lessons. I went with Dr. John Redman to see how he botanized uh, in the field with people to try to learn. At the end, this project is about collaboration. It's about seeing how other people is doing things and see what's working. And at the end, we, we all went the same. We want to conserve the, the biodiversity. So eventually in time, I got all my, all the stuff that I needed to go this credential to be able to take people to the, uh, to the trails and hike and botanize. So of course, we do a lot of INAS. Um, we, we are convinced that's the only way to support current or future botanists from anywhere in the world. So I teach a lot of people how to use this app and to share their ob observation in the field. But I also wanted uh, to have other tools, that people have other tools to be able to connect with nature. So that's why I published this book last summer. The book is called Expediciones Botanicas, Bitácora para Explorar el Matorral Costero. Uh, so if you were wondering why in so many pi uh, pictures of this presentation, a lot of people have this small book, is that book. It's because it's working. Somehow, this group book is a field guide. You are able to see a photo of the species. Uh, all the photo photos were taken by me. There's 213 species that people are able to identify on the trails on the Northwest Baja California. And on, not only identify them, they have like a space where they can write notes. So it's not like, okay, I saw you, I know you, what you are. It's like, take a moment and realize if the, just take a look if the plant have like maybe fruits, a pollinator, if what is growing uh, on the sides and Try to make memories to remember and have like it's like an adventure book. Like you, you are able to remember when, 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 where, where you see the plan and how the plan was going. So it's working. The book is working. I'm very happy for this. And this is how the look, the book look inside. Uh, you have like a small, uh, a lot of space where you can like feel and and also you are able to know if the plant is aromatic or stuff. So people is trying like to connect with the plant in other uh, options. Like they're able to smell it and stuff. So yeah, the book is working. It's another tool that is available. So as you can imagine, the, the project start growing. And I start taking uh, more larger groups. And mm, the project not only grow in the field. I mean, you are able to see like there's still a bunch of people with me on the, in the trail. Uh, I mean, maybe from January to March this year, I have taken around 200 people to, the, uh, to botanize with me. I know it sounds little, but the scope has been impressive. I mean, it's only me and trying to convince a lot of people that native plants are important, that the biodiversity of Baja California is important. So as you can imagine, the project expands and, and grows. And eventually, like, local newspaper were asking me to, hey, are you able to write a note about native plants? And I was like, okay, of course. And people start, like, sharing uh, videos on TikTok, Facebook, I don't know, social media, about me, about the book, about the plants. And don't get me wrong, this whole uh, opportunity for me is talking about native plants. It's not about me at all. It's about put the, the focus, I mean, the, the attention in the native plants and about um, the opportunity to try to conserve them. So schools, uh, 
um, invited me to do small conferences. Eventually, the Secretaría de Turismo, the Secretary of Tourism of Baja California, uh, gave me some money to like funding to create a visitor center to Expediciones Botanicas. So now we are able to have like a nice place where we start the hikings and when we finish, this uh, small place is going to be uh, finished. Uh, I mean, the inauguration is going to be summer this year, and it's places in the east part of Tijuana inside Rancho Casian. So yeah, the, the project continued growing. And eventually I was in radio stations and TV shows. It was like huge, I'm not, I'm not a famous person, but somehow people wanted me to start talking about plants. Like, okay, it's not about me, it's about plants. So uh, I was in TV shows, in radio stations, in a lot of schools, with university and college. Um, a person from environmental activism start asking me like, hey, and you are, are able to come to my event and give you a small talk and I'm like, okay, of course, let's talk about native plants. And with all this is just highlight the collaboration. For me, it's the key for the conservation of Baja, the biodiversity of Baja California. And I want to highlight three um, collaborations that I think are the most important, uh, in, uh, starting for the most recent. Uh, right now, I'm adv an, adv an advisor of Terra Peninsular. Terra Peninsular is a, a Mexican civil association committed to the protection of Baja California uh, ecosystems and wildlife. So now as an advisor, I'm able to help Dr. Alan Harper and Rosita Bustamante to achieve uh, the mission that they started 20 years ago, the, to conserve the ecosystems and wildlife. And me being able to given advice, now we are able to, for example, find rare uh, plants inside, inside the reserves as uh, Phacelia uh, stellaris. And just, uh, they are outside, they have like a table, go and ask them about what are they doing and consider visiting the reserves. And also uh, Terra Peninsular and I, are, we are trying to promote the conservation of the Pernopus, these unique and rare habitats that are, are very uh, threatened. Um, so yeah, this is the first thing that I want to highlight, like the big moment from the Botanical Expedition um, Project. The second thing is I'm part of the Baja Rare Project. It's a, I really uh, like this project. It's about uh, binational collaboration, trying to find rare species that grow in California and also in Baja California. So for this year, we have around 25 species that are rare, that are in danger of threatened, that we have to look at them at our Baja California. So we have a really good time at the field looking for these kind of rare species. And also, it has been a really good collaboration because uh, ba San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance via Baja Rare Project uh, has been funding uh, Expediciones Botanicas, so more people from Tijuana are able to live this experience. So yeah, it's San Diego Zoo is like funding this botanical expedition for college uh, students in Tijuana. Uh, so, and we do still finding good, cool stuff. We went uh, last week to Cerro Gordo in Tijuana. It's a place that is in the east part of Tijuana, the one that I mentioned that I think is the last refuge uh, in Tijuana for wildlife. It's a beautiful place where there's still a lot of things to uh, to botanize, I mean, new stuff to botanize, because I think uh, no other uh, botanist had never been there before. So yeah, we're still finding cool stuff and we are still collaborating and of course we share all our observation uh, not I naturally, so botanists from California are able to know the data that we are uh, doing in, in California, in Baja California, I mean. And the third thing that I want to highlight is about um, the moment when Maestra Monica Vega, she's Secretaria de Medio Ambiente y Desarrollo Sustentable de Baja California. Uh, she asked me to go to a botanical expedition last summer. Um, last, I mean, in summer, as you, as you can know, is very hot, it's very dry, at the, tri the trails. I was like, okay, I'm going to, let's go hike. But I know it's going to be very warm, but it was a great opportunity for native plants to have this person uh, at the trails. And we do the expedition. And I mean, almost all the, annual plants are, are gone. I mean, not, there's no annuals in that part of the year. You can see all the like, landscape is yellow and brown. 
But I show her at least one rare plant, the Monardella estoniana, that is growing on the trails, and I explain to her the necessity that we have to create a state norm uh, to protect native plants from Baja California. Uh, so we hike for around four or five miles, and eventually she, she said, okay, I mean, I want to be part of this project, uh, and she made the norm part of the agenda. Uh, right now in Mexico, we only have the federal law to protect uh, native plants, the NOM uh, 059 Semarra 2010, but it's only focused to protect endangered species in Mexico. Uh, so this is going to be like for all, only for the state of Baja California. So we need, uh, I really realize that we need a norm that protects species from a perspective uh, beyond borders to ensure the conservation of species in all the distribution. For example, the plant that I show you, the Monardella estoniana, have a binational distribution, it's a rare plant, and California is already protected because it's rare and not so threatened, and in Baja California it's not right now. So we need a norm that protects species uh, in all the distribution. So, um, when she told me about the good news, like, okay, let's do the norm, I'm, the norm, I was super happy. I was like, okay, let's do this. But I was overwhelmed as well because I still don't know all the flora of Baja California. But I'm lucky and I'm very grateful because I have good friends who are li good alliance, good collaborators. And at the moment that I ask, that I asked Dr. John Redman, that is sitting right there from here from the museum, I asked her like, hey, this is a huge, a huge project. I need help because it's uh, to make a norm to, for the protection of the flora of the native plants of Baja California. Immediately, he, he, he says, just let's do it, I'm in. And I was so happy, and then eventually he contacted me with Dr. Michelle Thompson, also from, from here from the museum. And we start making like a group uh, of um, botanists and experts. And we asked for help to Dr. Azula Van der Plank, to Dr. Ezequiel Escurra, other bot by national botanists, Carlos Gonzalez and David Cassian. And eventually we were start working in this norm. And Dr. John Reman compiled uh, the native species uh, list. So now we know we have 2,352 species of um, native plants in Baja California. And between us, we created uh, seven protection categories and we created the endemic list of the plants are endemic for the state of Baja California, that the ones uh, endemic to the whole peninsula, and the were the ones that are almost endemic to the peninsula. I mean, they have population in California or in Arizona. So it's been like a lot of work, but now uh, we know that 32 uh, species of plants are presumed extinct or extirpated in Baja California and elsewhere, and 23 were endemic to Baja California. So that's the reality in 100 years, something like that. We, we already lost 23 species for the way that we are developing uh, the cities in Baja California. And maybe other reasons, but I think the principle is how we are developing. So I see this state norm as a, a hope, a hope for species as Astragalus tijuanensis. This species is recently discovered in the east part of Tijuana, very close where I uh, do the, the botanical expedition. It was discovered by Dr. John Reman and last year. And with this norma, this plant is going to be already uh, protected because uh, it's a rare plant, it's already threatened, and it's endemic to Baja California. So yes, it's a hope to try to protect this kind of species. So right now, um, we continue doing this kind of meeting meetings. Um, the goal of this norma is to stop the loss of biodiversity in Baja California, protect rare, threatened, or endangered species. So about 20% of the plants that grow in Baja California are going to be protected in some category. And we also create a special protection uh, category to protect plants that have uh, actual commercial use, such as uh, the, the white uh, sage, so we, are continu we, we continue doing these meetings and working in the draft of the document that we hope to have uh, to publish uh, this summer. So 
Binational cross-border multidisciplinary collaboration has been key to achieve a perspective of the state of biodiversity in the whole California uh, floristic uh, province. But of course, it's just the first step. I, 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 I know we have to expand the idea of the norm and try to create a norm to also protect the wildlife in Baja California and try to expand the idea a little bit more and try to uh, uh, also Baja California Sur creates a state norm to protect floor, uh, the plants and also the wildlife that lives there. Um, consider uh, going to Tijuana to a botanical expedition with me. The next one is going to be this Sunday, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's so bad. But consider going to Tijuana, and we we are we have a lot of fun in the trail, and we botanize and identify plants, and and continue sharing your inuts. They help us a lot to understand the distribution of native plants and plants that have a national distribution. And that will be all. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for the invitation. And okay, thank you very much. And my parents, my family, thank you very much for being here. Thank you.